Hey guys, it's Wade from Creek Monsters, and uh, I want to take some time to discuss strategies or tactics and what gear to use for casting for kink, pre spawn king salmon, you know, and the brown trout and steelhead that come with them. Now, I understand it's a little late in the year for this because I just went to Burt Dam at 18 Mile Creek, and there was a really good amount of salmon, brown trout, even some steelhead there. And uh, I know the Oak Orchard River's got a pretty good salmon run going right now, so uh, a little late. But, you know, the past couple of weeks have been really busy for me with school, so I didn't really have time to, you know, make a video and think about what I was going to talk about. But uh, the Lower Niagara River, I have a friend who's been going there the past uh, couple of days, couple of weeks, and he's been getting a good amount on spinners. So this technique is not obsolete right now. And uh, my brother, not Western New York anywhere, my younger brother, he went to Olcott Pier, I think, last weekend, and he saw a decent amount of salmon swimming around. So there's still some staging, so these techniques are not completely useless this time of the year. It would be optimal to have discussed them a couple of weeks ago, but like I said, better late than never. So first off is the gear, obviously, that you want to select, your rod and your reel. And if you were going to just start with this, if you're a beginner at it, like me this year, just get something simple. You don't need a two, $300 Gary Loomis rod and some really nice spinning reel. All I have is a uh, Cabela's whip and stick. It was 20 bucks. At Cabela's and uh, the reason why I chose it is because it's length you want a longer rod eight foot eight foot six even nine foot that really helps you launch your spinner <clears throat> whatever your lure that you're using launch it off the pier or off the shore of Devil's Hole the Niagara River as far as possible and this allows you to not only have a variety of locations where you can cast but uh, it allows you to maximize the time your bait is in the water as well so that's something you really want to get. You want to get a rod and maximize your cast distance. Another reason is because there's been times I've gone to Old Cot Pier and the fish are out more. They're not exactly right at the mouth of the creek. They're out a little more. And if you can cast towards them, you have a bigger advantage. So uh, eight foot six, fast action tip. Now you want a fast action you know, rod tip, but you want a rod that can handle the strength and speed of a salmon. Now these salmon aren't like ones that have run up Burt Dam or run up miles up a different river. These are fresh, you know, pre-spawn salmon. They just built up, they're building up all their strength to make the run. So they're going to fight a lot harder than they do in a creek. I experienced salmon strength for the first time at Burt Dam last year. And they were very powerful, but it was nothing compared to the ones that I pucked at the Lower Niagara River at the NYPA platform this year. So you want to have a rod that's sturdy enough to land them. So, rods down, now we're just going to talk about the reel and the line. Now this isn't my salmon reel, I'm going to start using it for salmon soon. The reel that you've seen in all my salmon videos is a Cabela's Pro, Pro Guide size 40. Now what I like about it is the size of the reel, it's not huge, it's not like a big reel I've used for channel cats, but it's a, it can hold about 200 yards of 15 pound fluorocarbon. And that's basically, you can hook it, you can re successfully catch any king salmon size that you'll encounter with that. You want to have lines strong enough to apply a decent drag because a lot of times salmon fishing is combat fishing. So you don't want the fish to be able to run around too much because there's always going to be that person that doesn't want to reel in their line or they'll wait till the last second or they just might make an honest mistake, not hear you. So you want to have control over that fish. You don't want to just let it run all over the place. Another reason too is because unlike a creek where the salmon has limited area, if you're casting at the mouth of a river, the salmon can run wherever it wants. And if you don't have you know, a strong line or a lot of line, it can spool you and that would suck. What can you do? You have to go home while your line's gone. 15 pound is a little, I think that's a little thick. I think they still might be able to see that. Not so much in rivers as in creeks. And I have caught them on 15 pound fluorocarbon in both, but I think you'd get more hookups using 12 or 10. The reason why I use 15 is because I want a line that I can use for all aspects of salmon fishing. And the one aspect that I did frequently last year was fishing underneath Burt Dam. And people there, <coughs> there's a ton of people there, and a lot of them don't reel in their lines when you hook a salmon that's running around, so you need something with, you know, you need some strength there. You, you can't be outgunned at all. You got to be able to horse that salmon in a little bit. Not saying get a 100 pound line, just something you can apply some pressure with.
So, uh, yeah, a larger reel that can hold 150 to 200 yards and then get about 12 pound fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is the way to go. One, fluorocarbon sinks, it cuts through the water better. This will allow your lure to get a better depth than a mono line, which floats. Two, you know, just the sight, it's a lot, it's more invisible to the fish than monofilament or especially braided lines. Now, if you're fishing off, say, like Old Cop Pier or off the mouth of a creek, the lake can be muddy. You know, the Niagara River can, you know, with the, the currents and everything. The visibility isn't as clear as it is in, if they're running up the Oak Orchard River when the water's low or Burt Dam or like Cuba Creek, Buffalo Creek, which don't get salmon runs, but I'm just trying to give you an example of the water clarity. So your line won't matter as much, but you know, you don't want to get there at 15 pound line and see that the water's crystal clear because salmon, steelhead, brown trout, which have good eyesight, they might see that line. Now it's not like fly fishing where visual is everything you now they go based off of the sound or the vibrations the lures give off so that's another way you can get away with using thicker line but like i said 15 is a little thick and uh i'd probably go with 12 or 10 that's what i would do and as long as you have a decent amount of line on there you can handle a big big king salmon but uh you want i've seen people use eight or even four but the thing is you want to be geared up for the largest fish you could possibly encounter. Now, I know it's very rare that you'll hook a king salmon that's 30 pounds or over 25 pounds, but there is a chance that that monster, that fish of a lifetime, that 30 pound king salmon that's running, you will hook up with. And you don't want to say, you know, I lost a fish of a lifetime because I didn't have strong enough gear. You, you don't want that to happen. You want something that can handle that 30 pound king salmon even if that means that the fight of a regular 15 pound king salmon isn't gonna be as memorable. So uh, we talked about the reel, we talked about the line, we talked about the rod. Just get into some lures. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this because you can easily find this information anywhere. Just check out the DEC webpage. Or ask people on the creek, say, you know, what are they hitting today? What were they hitting last week? There's a lot of regulars that go salmon fishing every day during the run. You can get a lot of information from them. My personal favorite is the rattle trap. I've gotten a lot of hits on that. I know we didn't make a lot of videos about casting for salmon, but we've gotten a lot of hits. We just haven't caught that many. And that's why there's not that many videos because it means the technique works. It's the execution is the us part that failed. So the technique still works. Rattle traps, everything. So, you know, little Cleos, spinners, spoons, anything that's flashy, moonshine glow spoons for when it's at night. But I like rattle traps because the vibration and noise that that lure makes is unprecedented by you know any other is second to no other lure in that so i think that in a large body of water like the old cop here if you're casting into like ontario or devil's hole niagara river you can attract fish from more of a distance it's not so much you know with the maps you might have to get it up close to the fish and it might be hard to do in a large body of water so rattle trap is my favorite for this technique. Um, now I'll just talk about the actual action of what you're doing. You want to cast as far as you can. That way you can cover more water. You can, you know, cast to where the fish are if they're farther out from the pier. And you want to let it sink for a few seconds. The strike zone is generally on the bottom, and that's where you want your lure to be. You want your lure to be closest to where the fish are. Now this is going to result in some snags. It's inevitable. If you get to an area and you don't know how deep it is, the best way, unfortunately, the only way you're going to find out is you know, by getting snags. So don't go buying $10 rattle traps or whatever to start off with. Use some cheaper spinners. you know. And then once you get a feel for the underlying topography of the water, then you can step up your game with your lures and everything. So uh, cast as far as you can. Let it sink. And do it, you know, not a blazing fast retrieve, not super slow, just a moderate retrieve. Now, I hear there's two ways that the fish hit it. One, they either hammer it, they slam it like a bass. Second is, you don't even think it's on, you think you have a snag, next thing you know, something's ripping line. So, these are just the basic things that I can talk about with you for shore salmon fishing. Now that they're actually starting to run, 
I'm going to fish in the creeks more. I might go on maybe one more shore casting trip at like Whirlpool State Park, Niagara River. But for the most part, I'll be, you know, up in the tributaries. Now, I will make a video about that once I catch a few. I don't want to make a video about something that I haven't done or haven't succeeded in because I don't want to provide you guys with information that I can't back up at all. Now, this isn't the best information I'm giving you. It's what has worked for me. Other people are going to tell you different things. Listen to them. Listen to me. Just so you know, if you guys watch my videos, you might be wondering, mm -hmm, how do you do this? Now I can let you know. But uh, I'm not going to be attending Burt Dam or Oak Orchard that many times during the salmon run. I'm probably not even going to go to Oak Orchard River. Because last year, I was really excited and chopping at the bit to catch my first ever king salmon. So I didn't mind all the combat fishing. Now that I've caught a few, it hasn't degraded the value of a king salmon to me. But it makes the combat fishing less worth it. I don't, I really dislike the combat fishing and the antics of other fishermen. But uh, you gotta do what you gotta do to get a king salmon. So hopefully we'll be uploading some king salmon videos soon. I may be going to Whirlpool Friday. And uh, if I don't, next Friday, week after, I'm going to, uh, this, I'm gonna disclose the creek names because they don't get pressured at all, but they get a lot of salmon. I'm gonna be going up to uh, these creeks for a couple days and I'm sure I'll get something then and then uh, after maybe a couple more catches after that I'll share another video of how to catch salmon while they're running and then after that when the salmon are dying off we have steelhead and brown trout and then that's basically until spring and then we'll be back at the channel catfish run and it's basically a cycle that's how creek monsters works so we got you know a lot of stuff to look forward to with our channel Keep watching our videos. If you think there's anything we can improve on or any strategies we should try or any questions you have, please feel free to comment. We're here to help each other out. So good luck, and I hope to see you guys on the river.